Okay, as you can see in this video, I'm going to be drawing the Lewis dot structures for ionic compounds. I think it's a good idea before you actually draw them for some of the uh, ionic compound, I think we should draw them for some individual atoms first. Now, the Lewis dot structure is just shows the number of valence shell electrons on each element or in each atom. I kind of think of it as an abbreviated Bohr model. As you know, the Bohr model, we have all the shells and all of the valence and all the electrons in each shell. In the Lewis structure, we're really worried about the chemical bonding and the ratios for the chemical bonds. And in this case, therefore, we're only going to show the valence shell electrons because those are the electrons that are involved in, in the chemical bonding. Okay, this is neon. The first one is neon. We know neon is a group 18 element, and therefore it has eight valence shell electrons. We draw them like this, one, two, three, four, and then we start to double them up to show that Neon has a full octet, eight valence shell electrons. It's one of noble gases. That's why it doesn't bond. It's because it has a full outer shell. Okay, potassium has one valence shell electron. We can just show it like that. Boron has three. One, two, three. Count over from the left-hand side of the periodic table. This is phosphorus. Check our periodic table. We can count all the way across. Sodium, magnesium, aluminum, uh, silicon, and phosphorus it means there's five. So one, two, three, four, and the fifth one, then we start pairing them up based on the Pauli exclusion principle. So that is the Lewis dot structures for those elements. Any group one element is gonna have this Lewis structure. Any group 13 element is gonna have this Lewis structure. And any group 15 element is going to have this Lewis structure with five valence shell electrons, because that's what the groups are. They have the same valence shell electrons. And all the noble gases will have this valence shell electron configuration, okay? All right, let's erase that. Let's go on and draw some for some individual compounds. <clears throat> I think it's a good idea to kind of go through this step by step. I like to start by writing out the chemical formula and let's just, we know these are um, ionic and we can use the charges to come up with a chemical formula. We know this is potassium and it's gonna be K2O is the chemical formula. And that tells us that the ratio of potassium to oxygen is going to be Two to one. Two to one. <clears throat> Excuse me. So that's our chemical formula. <coughs> we know when we draw the Lewis structure, it's going to be two to one, just like that. All right. So now I'd like to go through also and draw the Lewis structures for the individual atoms. I think that helps us to visualize what's going on. So potassium has one valence shell electron. Oxygen, on the other hand, has six. One, two, three, four, five and then six, and you can see it has two holes, it's missing one electron here and one electron here. This potassium can fill one of those holes. It's K2, so we're gonna need another potassium with its one valence shell electron to fill that hole. This valence shell electron is going to come over and fill this spot. This valence shell electron is gonna come over and fill this spot. And now you can see potassium has a full outer shell because it's lost its one valence electron. Oxygen has gained two, and it now has a full outer shell also. So let's go through and draw the actual Lewis structure for that compound. We're going to draw the oxygen in the middle. Put the potassiums on either side. We have our ratio two to one. We're going to ask ourselves, okay, what's going to gain the valence shell electrons? Gain electrons, that's the oxygen. So therefore, we show the gainer with a full outer shell. And to show it properly, we like to draw these brackets around it to show that it has kind of possession of those electrons. We put the charge, minus two, put the charge on the potassium is plus one, the charge on this potassium is plus one, and that is the Lewis structure for potassium oxide. We have some idea that we're drawing right because we have plus one, plus a minus two, plus another one equals zero, and we want the overall charge on the ionic unit to be zero, okay? So that's K2O, two potassiums and one oxygen. Okay, let's draw another one. This is aluminum fluoride, oops. Aluminum is plus three, fluorine is minus one, and therefore we know that the chemical formula for aluminum fluoride is ALF3, and that tells us we want to draw the Lewis structure for the individual atoms first, which I think is a good idea. 
three valence shell electrons for aluminum. Fluorine has seven. So let's draw that. One, two, three. Okay, now fluorine wants to gain one electron, but aluminum has three to give up. Okay, that tells us that we're gonna need three fluorines. It's gonna need fluor three fluorines. Each fluorine will take one of these valence shell electrons from aluminum, and then they'll have a full outer shell, each of them. And you can tell that um, that means that the ratio of aluminum to fluorine is going to be one to three. All right, now let's try and draw this. It gets a little busy, but let's just see how it all works out. Okay, we're going to take the thing that we have one of, the aluminum, and we're going to put it in the middle. Around that, we're going to draw our three fluorines because we know it's three to one, or excuse me, one to three. And I'm just going to put the other fluorine right here. You could put it above if you wanted to. Now we ask ourselves again, what gains the electron? The thing that gains the electron is the fluorine. So I'm going to show fluorine with a full outer shell. I'm going to draw this on all three of them. Just go through, put all your valence shell electrons in there. Fluorine gains, so we show it with all the electrons, and then we have to show the brackets. And we put minus one. And we do the same thing for all three of them. Minus one. It's a little tedious drawing all this, but this is how it works out and then minus one, and then plus three, and you can see the same thing. If we add up all the charges, we have three minus ones, one plus three, and the overall charge on that structure is zero. Okay, so that's how that works for aluminum fluoride. Again, I draw the single atom in the middle, I draw the three around it, and the thing that gains the electrons, in this case it's the fluorine, I show with the full outer shells, the brackets, and the charges on all of them like that. Okay, so I think that's the last one we're going to do. Let's erase that. Okay, that's the end of the video. Hope you found it helpful. I hope you can use that. Let me know if you have any comments or questions. Leave them in the comment section below. Thank you very much.